Aunt Yamama. Aunt Jamama, y'all know, I, boy, I never thought I'd be making this video. Okay, so Aunt Jamama, that syrup, that batter, I mean, it was the world's first pan, first just add water pancake mix. I mean, Aunt Jamama has been around for, has been around for over a hundred years. Not just that, I mean, even places like Disneyland, they literally had a, Aunt Jamama's restaurant right on the park and they had this Aunt Jamama character that would serve the um, serve the park goers and sing and dance. This was on Disneyland. So Aunt Jamama was a big thing and they really capitalized on this brand. I mean we had syrup, we had pancake mix, we had pancake batter, we had biscuits, we had we had waffles, we had uh, we had merch, we had clothing, we had hoodies. Even today, right now, you can go to Target.com and you can get you can get yourself a copy of Aunt Jamama Slave in the Box. But now I'm here in June 2020, um, Aunt Jamama is getting canceled. Cancel culture has finally caught up with Aunt Jamama and the brand and the franchise they're getting rid of Aunt Jamama as many are saying that it is a race, racist stereotype and I gotta be honest now I'm gonna be strictly honest me personally I wasn't the biggest Aunt Jamama fan you know as far as the syrup because it was kind of like watery and whatnot and me, I was a big king syrup because I like it like dark and I like it like it was thick and it was sweet and it doesn't sound like I'm talking about syrup. <laughs> no, but seriously, Aunt Jemima has gotten canceled, people. Cancel culture, got him. Let me play the clip. Aunt Jemima is history. Quaker Oats announcing today that it is retiring both the logo and the name of the 130-year-old brand, saying the brand's origins are based on a racial stereotype dating to the days of slavery. And Quaker Oats issued this statement. We recognize Aunt Jemima's origins are based on a racial stereotype. While work has been done over the years to update the brand in a manner intended to be appropriate and respectful, we realize those changes are not enough. So as you see, Quaker Oats, you know, in response to show that they support Black Lives Matter, they, like every other CEO, making sure they keep into that bottom line, they have decided that, you know what, Black Lives Matter now, and we knew. It's funny because, as you can see in their statement, they said that they knew that it had slave ties and they knew about the history of Aunt Jemima, but they continued on. This CEO, Quaker Oats, is funny because they they said that they knew the slave ties and they knew what um, Aunt Jemima was all about. And instead of saying, we're not putting our hands on that, <laughs> they had decided that just over the years that they would gradually try to um, distance themselves from the, uh, from the slave ties by changing her face. So first she had a scarf and she looked very slavery and then um, this year they changed her again and then this year they changed her again and now we're at the 2020 and this is what she looked like. So they put her on earrings and whatnot. You know, y'all know. So they, instead of getting rid, oh, yeah. okay, but let's talk about the slave ties. I mean, since um, Quaker Oaks has announced that they will be rebranding in order to make progress towards racial equality. Let's talk about these slave ties. Okay, so to really break this down, Aunt Jemima is basically a, it is a story of a woman that became food, which became a product, and then in return became one of the most recognizable figures in America's history. Aunt Jemima. I ain't your mama, but you gonna get some good eating up in here. Okay, so here's the deal. White people used to have these, what they call in the 19th century, these minstrel shows. And in these minstrel shows, they would have white people 
um, they would dress up in blackface and they would do little skits and comedies and dances and singing and they were basically trying to, well not trying, but they were mocking slaves and black people. It was entertainment to them and it was super funny to them. I mean they would portray black people as dim-witted, lazy, easily frightened, chronically idle, superstitious and happy-go-lucky buffoons. <laughs> and that's a mouthful. Okay, so in 1875, at one of these minstrel shows, um, a black comedian, he came up, and a singer and a slave, he came up, and he had sung a song that blew everyone away. And it was called Old Aunt Mama. It was a song, it was a song that told a story of this deluded uh, slave that uh, had this master and this master was just kind of putting them on and telling them that hey and she was telling them hey when I die you're going to um I'm gonna set you free one day and he just believed and every day he was asking am I am I free today Mrs. M Mrs. For sure today's the day and that's basically what the song is kind of about I mean these are some of the lyrics mm, yes Lord we gonna be free one day, my missus said. Yes, she is. This goes out for show. Yeah, Lord. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My old missus promised me when she dies, she set me free. She lived so long, her head got bald. She swore she wouldn't die at all. Mm, I'm gonna be free. No, but to make a long story short, because this video has been long enough. Basically, in 1889, there was these two guys, Chris and Charles. They had um, bought, a, they put their monies together and they bought this flour mill and they end up creating the very first self-rising pancake mix because they had all this extra flour and they wanted to know what to do with it so they created this formula. But they needed a um, branding, they needed to sell this and one of these guys, Chris, had been to um, this show of uh, this minstrel show where the white people were in black faces and he was inspired and he remembered Aunt Jamama, that slave owner that was always working and always promised we should use her. So basically, eventually, Aunt Jamama, um, they created this song into a character and they found someone, they found someone to play and then her name was Nancy, her name was Nancy. And she ended up being the face of this new Aunt Jamama. So does Aunt Jamama have slave ties and was created by and because and due to slavery? Yes, of course it was. And a lot of other products too are going to be getting canceled here pretty soon, I can imagine. Um, but Quaker Oats, it's funny that they had that stance. They had that stance. At the end of the day, Quaker Oaks, they had that stance just now where they just stated, hey, we knew about the racial ties. Now it's time to rebrand. But you know what? Five years ago, five years ago, Quaker Oaks was being sued. They had a different stance five years ago when it wasn't appropriate and when it wasn't the general consent to um, be with Black Lives Matter because Five years ago, they were being sued and they took a different stance. They actually stated that, hey, you know, our pancake mix ain't about no woman. It don't have no slave ties. We're about feeding people. Let me let, me let the report tell you. The descendants of a woman who they say portrayed Aunt Jemima are suing the brand's owner, Quaker Oats. They want $2 billion. Now, the family claims that the food giant promised to pay their great-grandmother a percentage of the profits. Existed. In a statement, the company said this lawsuit has no merit. The claims are frivolous and unsubstantiated. The Aunt Jemima brand is not and never has been based on any one person. We are confident this legal matter will be resolved in our favor. It's funny that it takes George Floyd and it takes protests and rioting for and it takes black people threatened to not buy your stuff before you decide to make some changes. Changes. To me, changes come through actions. And to be honest, 
So that's the story of Aunt Jemima. I hope that I summed it up just a little bit. Me, my personal opinion, I really don't care um, about them rebranding, renaming, or doing whatever they got to do because I know that it's all about the bottom line. Your actions speak speak louder than your words. And the fact that it takes, yes, it's never too late to say, I'm sorry, and it's never too late to change, but you know, your actions for a hundred years showed that you knew and you were on board with um, the slave ties and now that you got protests and it's gonna affect your bottom line, you want to make changes. I see it a lot now and it do not impress me. I go with it and, and hey, good job for you, but you know, at the end of the day, there are businesses and I, just gonna end this video as always there guys KIP keep up